Hey everyone, Dan Stein here. Let's take a look at how we can use the free BIM 360 design option from Autodesk. This is going to be a one take recording, so forgive me if there's any misspeaks I have to correct. So first we go to the Autodesk website and we need to download desktop connector. Revit cannot use BIM 360 design to host Revit models in the cloud without the current version of desktop connector installed. Once that's installed, let's take a look at how we can access the free BIM 360 design from Autodesk during the current pandemic. Notice here that Autodesk has already donated $600,000. Thanks Autodesk, that's awesome. Also thanks for this opportunity for people who need to work remote and might have challenges using VPN, remote desktop. In this case, they can use BIM 360 design for commercial work through May 31st of 2020. So what you're gonna do is go to the same place that you would start a free trial. We go to autodesk.com, downloads, free product trials. By the way, if you're using a home computer, you could install the Revit trial, Revit 2020, and that's good for 30 days. Here you click on BIM 360, and it appears that you need to sign up for a demo to get access. Perhaps given the volume, they won't be requiring that at this time. But regardless, it says to follow the same procedures as you would for a free trial. The next step while you're waiting for that trial to come through is you would go to your Autodesk account portal. Here I have all the company people blurred out and later you'll see projects blurred out so I'm not showing information that I shouldn't be sharing. So you're going to click on add new user First I clicked on the by user option on the left and you'll see that there's a specific format that you need to enter the username first name comma last name comma email address and then even if you're not adding a second email address you have to do the semicolon to get it to trigger and turn into a valid name otherwise you can't get the send invite option to go from grayed out below. So just do a semicolon and spacebar, and now you can see it validated the input format, and now I can click send invite. As soon as I do that, the user gets an email that they'll need to click on and follow the steps and provide a password to create a free Autodesk account. That free Autodesk account will persist past this temporary use of BIM 360. And then based on the number of seats that you have, you'll check to give a BIM 360 design license to this individual. So it went from seven open seats down to six by me assigning this to this John Doe fictitious user. So now this person, once they create their account, they have this BIM 360 design entitlement available. That's the first part related to the user and assigning an entitlement to that user. At any point, um, you can remove that BIM 360 design seat if you need to and even delete that user maybe down the road once the uh, free trial, the extended trial is over. If you need to remove that person, you can do that here. Uh, otherwise, you obviously don't want to do that until after the free trial's over and you've downloaded your projects out of the cloud. So in addition to going to the Autodesk account portal, now we need to go to admin.b360.autodesk.com and then first thing you need to do is create a company. So when you first go to companies, it'll be a blank list. Here's just a bunch of companies that the company I work with has projects with. So I'm going to create a fictitious company here called ABD Engineering. And then I'm also going to assign it a trade or company type. So these are the only two required fields, as you can tell by the asterisk 
next to those two fields. If you want to fill out more information, which I typically do, like address and company logo, you can. Once we save that, you'll see that the company is listed. So the company needs to be created because now when we go to add a user, so this is an addition to having created an account, an Autodesk account. This is a totally separate thing where you need to add users who have an Autodesk account and a BIM 360 entitlement to your BIM 360 design hub. And for each user, you're gonna assign a company. So if I just start typing A, B, D, if I can type correctly, you'll see it pop up automatically so you don't even have to finish typing. And then for now, for the default role, I'd just be sort of generic if this is the first time you're setting this up and just call everybody an architect or an engineer. There's more sophisticated ways of doing this, but I wouldn't worry about that right now. And then um, if you start searching for your, your user, you can see them listed here. Now let's go to the roles just for a moment. These are all pre-created by Autodesk, so you can see architect and you can see engineer and then the rights that they have. And then yourself, if you're setting this up and maybe a couple other power users, you might want to be set as BIM manager. They have elevated control, including project admin rights. Once you have the company and the users created, now you create a project. So I have the autofill blurred out there, but we'll type pandemic research center. Let's use our architecture and engineering skills to help combat COVID-19. So we're creating this pandemic research facility, project type medical laboratory. And again, only the asterisk items need to be filled out. One, the third one is English, which for me is the default and I don't have to change it. And then the next thing you're going to need to do is enable services. Document management for sure. Design collaboration uh, is, is a good one as well. So there is a way to set up a template on that drop down on the left. So like subfolders automatically get created. But we're going to do that manually just so you can see how it's done. So you start typing typically your name as a project admin. You always want to be associated with every project so that you can go in and provide support. And then you do that for the second section as well. So document management, design collaboration, and then finish. So now the project exists. You can search for it. You can see we have 139 projects, so it's easier just to start typing in and search for it than to go through the list. All of our projects start with a job number, by the way, as well. So I clicked on that project. I can see the members listed. I can add additional members, so maybe I need to add John Doe to the list. I click Add, and then just start typing their name, and it should show up automatically. Anybody with that, those letters in their name. So I click the person and then on the right I need to hit select because I could add multiple people at once this way. The company and the role is automatically assigned and the, the role relates to the rights that they have. So that's a fairly straightforward process. The next step that's really important is to go into document management. And here's where we're going to create the folders and we need to make sure we add permissions properly to those folders. So all the Revit models are going to be in this project files section. I click the little dot 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 icon to add a subfolder. I'm going to do that one for each disciplined, uh, one for each discipline's Revit model. They don't have to all go in their own folder, but this is how most companies do it on their local network. If your company also uses Civil 3D, or if you only use Civil 3D, you might just create a Civil folder. So clicking the dot, dot, dot again, we can click on permissions. And then I'm going to click add. 
And what I like to do is add permissions based on company so that when you add members later, you don't have to come in here and do anything with permissions. So for people in our own company, I tend to give them higher rights, the second from the highest. And again, anybody associated with this company that are, that's added later will automatically get those rights and they trickle down to all the subfolders. We also want to add our external consultants, but we don't want to give them as many rights. Typically, we just want them to be able to link in our Revit model, but not be able to open it directly. So at the highest level, we'll maybe give them the view only rights. So now if we go to the MEP folder and click on permissions, we'll see that the LHB elevated rights trickle down, but for the ABC engineering, at this subfolder level, we can bump up the rights because obviously that external company needs to be able to work within their own folder. But we go back to the architecture folder and you see they still have the lower rights, which means they can just link your Revit model. But if they use the open command and browse to the architecture folder, it would appear as if the folder was empty. So that's really all the setup stuff. We had to set up, we had to install desktop connector uh, set up the Autodesk account and apply the entitlements. And then we had to go into the BIM 360 design page, create a company, create members, add a project, add members to the project, and then set the permissions after creating the folder. Now when you go into Revit, you'll actually see all your projects automatically listed. Uh, you have to log in in the upper right. See where it says dan.stein you have to be logged in with that Autodesk account email address, otherwise those projects won't show up. So just to set this up and show how we get a project created and in, into the cloud, I'm going to start from scratch by creating a brand new project. This is only going to take a couple hours as I draw an entire research facility, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> Obviously I'm kidding. We're just going to draw four walls in a door. We're going to save it to this folder on our local drive first. It's a little unfortunate, but you have to save it somewhere local first before you can uh, publish it to the cloud. Not a big deal. So we hit save. And then we're also going to enable work sharing before we do this. So click on work sets on the collaborate tab. Just hit OK. It's going to make the two default work sets. If you're using your company template um, or a project that's already created, you actually just sort of fast forward to this point now in the step-by-step -step instructions that I'm sharing. So I close the project and then just, you didn't really have to close it, but I just want to show you that now we have a work sharing file. If we open it, Again, this may be a project that you already have set up. You're not starting from scratch. I just opened a local copy. And now that I'm in a local file on the Collaborate tab, I have the Collaborate in Cloud option. I click on it. I go to my hub for my company that I set up with the free extended trial. I select the project that I just created. Project files, architecture, and then before I hit initiate, I want to make sure the file name is correct. I'm going to get rid of that extra information that's added because I'm in a local file. And then I'm going to click initiate. So at this point, the project is uploading to the cloud, which as I understand it is on Amazon's AWS servers. So the fact that Autodesk is giving this uh, entitlement and service away for free uh, perhaps they have an, a, an arrangement with Amazon during this pandemic, but it's it's quite a big deal, I think. It's not just them giving away intellectual properties. There's, there's physical costs associated with this. So when we do a sync with Central, we can see the file name now in the cloud. And now that we're done, again, just again as a overall example, I'm going to close Revit altogether. You wouldn't normally have to do that right away. 
So back in the BIM 360 design area through the browser, I can see that project already showing up. And because I uploaded it and then I synced again, it's already at version 2. So now I'm going to open Revit again. I just again closed it just to make a point. So now anybody who's going to work on this project, now that it's in the cloud, would open up Revit, log in in the upper right. You can see Revit keeps you logged in. The preview is telling you that the file's in the cloud. Once you're logged in, all your projects are listed on the left in the start screen. You actually never need to use the open command again because all the projects that you're invited to are just served up on the home screen. We go into the folder that our file's in and click on it. The first time you open a BIM 360 file, it's copying all the related files to your C drive, including the links. If you have a food service consultant, this electrical engineering consultant, and then the next time you open it, if those links haven't changed, it won't re-download them. So the first open might take a lot longer, but subsequent ones usually go much faster. Um, if we need to link in an external file, MEP, structural, it, notice how it brings you directly to your BIM 360 folder, because that's the only place you should be linking Revit models from. So you'd select your Revit model here and hit open. And we'll add a few more things here, but again, the the way we set up the permissions for the consultant when ABD Engineering is in their MEP model, they'll do that Revit link step and they'll see the architectural model. But if they do the open command in Revit and browse to that same architecture folder, it'll look like the folder's empty. So here you can see the sync with central dialog looks a little different, but it's still doing the same thing. And then if you wait a little bit and refresh, that's going to update in the browser and say version 3. So one last thing to show you related to opening a Revit project in the cloud. There is no detach from central option, so you have to open it and immediately do a save as. So if you need to archive a file, just open it directly, do a save as, and when you save it, it's always going to be a central file. There's no option for it not to be. Now if we look at the list of Revit files here, on the far right there's the three dot 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 button. This is where you get to the specify work sets and open and audit option. So that's a little different than the traditional open dialog box with local files on your C drive or your server.